Hey there, and welcome back to RimWorld, and with that, also welcome back to the Ice Sheet. My name is Pete, and today we complete another part of our RimWorld Beta 18 Tribal Ice Sheet Challenge. Our tribal colonist Cambiar is still busy researching electricity, after we completed researching beds in the last episode, and Cambiar also built himself one. That bed is now also where he'll take a couple hours of rest in, before then starting the next day off in true cannibalistic fashion. And with that breakfast, he has now consumed his first entire human corpse, leaving us without any food reserves. So let's hope we get a small raid or another crashed escape pod soon. Right, I watched Cambia's hunger bar tick down bit by bit here, and no, we sadly did not get an event that would help us get it back up. However, while scanning the map for animals here, I found a hare. Obviously, that's not going to be a long-term solution to the problem, but it is definitely better than nothing, so let's have Cambia engage immediately. Alright, one hit with the club and the hare is dead already, so uh, let's consume the body right on the spot here. Now I had a look at the rest of the map and the game was kind enough to gift us one more, so it looks like we'll have one more meal before we're back at square one. This hare also does not seem to go down that easily, as it is fighting back viciously. Eventually though, Cambiar gets the kill, and even though we are in the early stages of hypothermia, I want Cambiar to treat his wounds immediately. Okay, everything is bandaged up, and that means we can haul the hair back to base, and then with the sun going down and night setting down above the ice sheet, Cambiar can now get some rest. The next morning then, Cambia consumes the other hand, with that our food reserves are back down to zero, and a few hours later things get even worse as Cambia suffers his first mental break. Now a mental break that is always a risk when a colonist's mood is too low. In Cambia's case the mood boost from cannibalism expired, and that combined with two hair corpses was enough to push him over the edge. Now the game has different kinds of mental breaks, we are currently experiencing sad wandering, which basically has Cambia wander around aimlessly around the base. Now, while he's in that state, we cannot control him, and out on the ice sheet that poses a real danger, because surprise surprise, it's still pretty cold outside, and Cambia is slowly starting to feel the full effects of hypothermia. And then, in true Randy Random Extreme spirit, things get even worse. In the most inconvenient moment possible, we get our first raid. And I had hoped for a tribal raid, so guys on the same technology level as us. Unfortunately though, that is not the case, as this guy is equipped with an auto pistol. It is in awful condition, but in this stage of the game it is still a very very dangerous ranged weapon, and one wrong hit could take us out of the game entirely. Now luckily Cambia's mental break comes to an end shortly after the arrival of our enemy, and so we can now prioritize tending to his frostbite. Afterwards, he can then actually get a bit of sleep, because it will take the raiding party a while to get here. Here we can also see the somewhat positive aftermath of a mental breakdown, as the plus 40 from the catharsis here will raise Cambia's mood for the next two and a half days. Alright, our enemy is coming closer, but before we move out again with Cambia, we want his hypothermia to vanish, so we'll just have to wait a few seconds here. And here we are, it will now take a while in the cold before it pops up again, so that means we can now draft Cambiar and prepare for combat. Now the only way into our base is to go through the trap here, and we will wait right behind that to pick off the pieces, and to hopefully not get killed by this guy's pistol. Okay, just as we are about to enter melee combat here, we get an interesting message. And this right here is actually one of the ways to end the game, because a friendly AI has just contacted us with the location of a starship hidden on this planet. And with that starship, we could escape, which would mean the end of this playthrough. However, if we have a look at the map here, that starship is close to the south pole of this planet, while our own base is almost as far away as it could be, right here, close to the north pole. So we are still far, far away from being even remotely able to travel down there, so uh, let's keep it in mind, but focus on the here and now. And in that here and now, the game was actually not paused while we were looking at the map, and so we sadly missed how Cambiar took his opponent down. 
Now, the enemy isn't dead yet, and that is actually exactly what I wanted, because now we can strip his clothing and wear it and not get penalized for wearing dead man's apparel. And this is one of the good things about the ice sheet, everyone who willingly comes here is also adequately equipped, and so with the cloth toque and the cloth parka here equipped, Cambiar is now much better protected against the cold. The decision to switch the steel club for the auto pistol is also a no-brainer, I think. This now gives us a ranged weapon, and with the goal being Cambia's survival, those are generally preferable. Now, because we need to eat soon, let's also have Cambia put the attacker out of his misery. He is already in the process of bleeding out, and if that doesn't kill him, the cold surely will. So, the least we can do is to speed up the process. Afterwards, Cambia will also have a meal right here on the spot, then he can rearm the deadfall trap, just in case we have more visitors soon. And once that is taken care of, we can haul the dead body back to the stockpile, and Cambia can go back inside, treat his wounds, and then finally get some rest. After a few hours of sleep then, Cambia's wounds are almost all healed again, as we get another event, a rather neutral one this time however. A group of travelers from another tribe is passing by. Now they don't have anything to trade, so I think we'll just let them pass by. Instead, we can now focus on improving our defenses. I have given Cambiar a mining task here for 6 blocks of steel. With that, we will eventually build what you can see on screen right now, 7 pieces of steel wall, a steel door and 2 steel deadfall traps. Those will be placed in another line ahead of the already existing defenses, and we will eventually mine out that one piece of mountain on the right side, so that our enemies have no other choice but to go through a small trapped corridor to reach our base. Now Cambiar has once again gotten food poisoning here, which will make the mining process a lot slower, all the while we see that our visitors have spilled some blood. Now at first I was looking for a polar bear or another wild animal in the vicinity. Then however I figured out that two of these guys got into a fight with each other. You can see it here, Tona and Lex have apparently been brawling. It didn't really hurt their relationship that much, but it sure did leave them a bit bruised. And based on that, a rather devious plan began to form. Now as you can see here, the group is moving again, but Lax is lagging behind a bit. His injuries have apparently affected his movement speed, and I think we can use that to Cambiar's advantage. We will now wait for the bulk of the group to pass by, and then we'll draft Cambiar and his auto pistol and set up a little ambush. Yes, we are going to attack a totally harmless group of traps people here, because unfortunately that is the level you need to stoop down to occasionally if you want to survive out here on the ice sheet. Now, one more thing before we start attacking here, this guy is a member of the Grey Leopard Born. That is one of the tribes here on the planet, and if we look at the faction tab, we can see it is also a tribe that is at least somewhat friendly towards us at the moment. That green plus 15 is a measurement of our current relationship, and I want you to watch that closely. Because Cambiar is now about to start shooting. Alright, here we are, Cambia has landed his first hit. Now Lax is still walking and apparently also not retaliating, but if we have another look at the faction tab now, we can see that the relationship has dropped from 15 down to 3. Still barely in the green, but noticeably closer to the negatives. Now the majority of the injuries here on Lax have come from the previous brawl. Cambia's gunshot, however, has hit his right arm and caused some significant bleeding. Not enough, however, to put Lax in serious danger, so we sadly have to continue. Also of particular interest, by the way, these other three guys don't seem to mind us attacking one of their own at all. Now, there will come a point where that changes, but I hope we can avoid that. Now, the next shot is a direct hit once again, and with that, our relationship with this faction has dropped down to minus nine, so they now have a slightly negative attitude towards us. However, and this is very important, they have not turned hostile yet. Our shot has once again hit Lax's right arm, which means the bleeding has increased, but once again our target is not in significant danger just yet. So we can now move up a bit to increase Cambia's chances of hitting, and it doesn't take long until he does. This gunshot has now hit the torso, and our target is now in the process of bleeding out. He does still have 23 hours to be rescued though, which is more than enough to comfortably escape the map. And if he does, all of our efforts here would have been for nothing. So with a faction relationship of minus 20, we have no other choice but to keep firing. All 
Right, perfect. The fourth hit downs our target, and that is exactly where I want him to be. Down, but not dead. The relationship with the Grey Leopard Born is now down to minus 32, but still not hostile, and that is the all-important thing. Now we can also see the other guys here are still minding their own business, so we can now take all the time we need to strip Lax of his clothing. And uh, let's actually compare what he has to what we are currently wearing. And the main stat we are of course looking at is cold insulation. His normal quality cloth parka sets off the threshold by minus 40 degrees, while the shoddy one that we grabbed as loot in the previous raid only protects from minus 28. The same thing is true for the cloth tuke. Lax's normal quality one protects from minus 9.6 degrees, while the raider tuke protects for only minus 6.5 degrees. So we will now gladly take Lax's clothing here, providing us with a substantial boost to our cold resistance, and with that we have actually taken one of the most important steps in the early game in this playthrough, cold protection down to a level where only the coldest temperatures out here on the ice sheet will have a negative effect on us, so Cambiar, who has just consumed some of Lax's pemmican here, he is now a lot more resistant to the elements out here. Alright, now Cambiar has hauled everything back to the base, except for Lax, that is, who is still bleeding out in the cold. And while Cambiar is beginning to mine, we get the message here, the Grey Leopard Born have lost their member Lax, and this gives us another minus 5 penalty to the faction relationship. Still, even at minus 37, the tribe has not turned hostile on us yet, which means they won't send raiding parties to our camp, and as long as they don't do that, the negative relationship will not hurt us that much. We can now haul Lax's body back to the stockpile, and with that, for the first time in this game, our food reserves are actually looking quite decent. With about one and a half bodies and a few small bites of pemmican, we should now be able to survive for a few more days, and who knows what Randy throws at us in the meantime. You were maybe also able to catch it on screen a few seconds ago. Thanks to the new clothing, our minimum comfortable temperature is now down to minus 48 degrees, and right now we only have a smooth minus 20 outside, so Cambiar is well prepared for things to get a lot colder. Now while Cambiar is sleeping, we can quickly increase the size of our stockpile zone here. As you can see, we are slowly running out of space. This is of course only a temporary solution, and we will build a real storage room soon. With the storage area increased and the roof in place, we can now continue to work on the defenses and have Cambiar mine the remaining 5 blocks of steel. While hauling things back, he can also get some food, and with that, one more body completely disappears. Now it's time to get started with the construction work, and that means we can now also put the two deadfall traps in place. Those will go to the left and right of the doors here, so that Cambiar and any other friendlies can pass through without being harmed, while anyone who attacks us has to take the long trapped way. For anyone who has ever played a tower defense game, this layout should look vaguely familiar. Alright, here we are, a second line of defense in place. We now have three steel deadfall traps, in most cases enough to take out a single enemy without the need for us to interfere. And it seems like the new defenses will be put to the test now, as we have the second raid of Cambiar's short stint on the ice sheet coming in. This right here is a pirate, so his tech level is above ours. However, not only is he somewhat weakened by a few scars, he is also only wielding a sandstone club, so in a straight-up fight, Cambiar and his auto pistol should already have the upper hand. Now it takes the pirate a while to get to us, but eventually he does, and now let's see how well we have built our defenses. Lovely, the pirate is down but not dead and we didn't even have to fire a single shot, so uh, let's do the usual and begin looting. Okay, so I didn't expect this to happen, the pirate just got up again, and uh, it seems like he's now running away. However, since he is worth a few days of food for Cambia, we of course cannot let that happen, so we'll quickly pursue. Alright, once again he's down and it looks like we have to take matters into our own hands this time. So uh, let's put him out of his misery and then haul him back to the stockpile. Oh. 
Okay, now this took a while, but our enemy is finally dead. And so Cambiar can now haul back the rest of his items, reset all three traps for the next visitor, and then get a taste of who he just killed. While Cambiar is busy cleaning up, we get another notification here. A chunk of spacecraft has fallen nearby, and we could now go over there, deconstruct it, and haul back whatever we receive. However, as far as I know, these spacecraft chunks will always only give you steel and components, both things that we do not desperately need right now, and considering the rather long way over to the crash site, I think we'll just let those chunks be for the moment. Outside of the base, I also quickly spotted another hare, so let's hunt that down for a slightly more balanced diet. Okay, eventually I once again had to resort to melee attacks here. The pistol is just way too inaccurate, especially in the hands of a mostly untrained shooter like Cambiar. As the game progresses, of course, and Cambiar has more opportunities to shoot at things, his shooting skill will also slowly increase, but for the moment his accuracy is simply not good enough to shoot a small animal like this over long distance. The hare will then also be Cambiar's next meal on the evening of the same day, and he consumes it in one go, freeing up another space in the stockpile. And uh, speaking of stockpile, now that we are about halfway through to our research of electronics, I think it is time that we start another small project. Now, our current stockpile is not only filling up rapidly, but apart from the line of defenses that we already have in place, it is also completely unprotected. So if, let's say, a polar bear or an arctic wolf were to sneak into the base, they could easily eat one of the corpses outside. This early in the game, that might be devastating though, and so I have queued up a sizable mining order here. Now, mining inside a mountain will always produce these stone blocks that you can see here. And walking over those stone blocks is a bit of a hassle, and everyone who attempts to do so will be slowed down. For that reason, we will create a dumping stockpile for these stone blocks behind our defenses, so that whoever makes it through will then be slowed down in a big pile of stone chunks. Now, a mining project of this size does take a while, but roughly half a day later, Cambiar is finally finished, and he can now begin hauling the stone chunks to the stockpile. Then, while he's resting from a hard day of work, we get another notification. It seems like another escape pod has crashed close by. The downed woman here goes by the very fitting name of Disaster, and if we look at her health tab, we probably won't be able to save her. Well, it's not like we were trying to in the first place. We can, however, still rescue her, just so that she's closer by to the base. Okay, Disaster actually died while being hauled back by Cambiar. Both the cold and the blood loss were apparently a bit too much for her. We can, however, continue hauling her back regardless. After all, at least for Cambiar, she will still be of use. Now, while Cambiar is resting and there are still a few stone chunks waiting to be hauled, we can already create our second stockpile here, and we will use the stockpile to store pretty much everything that's not corpses or building materials. And yeah, I know I said earlier that one of the reasons for building this stockpile was actually to protect the corpses. However, having them this far away from our small shelter is not really ideal, as it will take Cambiar just way too long going back and forth for every meal. Eventually, we will continue to dig into the mountain and build him a dining room closer by, but for the moment we cannot afford to waste too much time, so the corpses will stay outside, close to where Cambiar needs them. Now, I have also told Cambiar to mine one more chunk of steel here, because we need a bit more to eventually build a door in front of the storage room, otherwise the new stockpile won't really be that much of an upgrade compared to what we already have outside. Shortly after, we get another event, and a very, very interesting one at that. A meteorite has crashed down in the area, and not just any kind of meteorite, this one left behind a large chunk of silver ore. And in case you didn't know, silver is the currency on the Rimworld, and now we have an excellent opportunity right here to mine a large sum on our own. Now, we already have a smaller one a bit further down southeast, but this big one here could easily provide us with about 500 silver or even more, good enough to buy maybe one or two nice items from the next trader. For today, though, we will focus on finishing up the storage room, as we set the stockpile priority to preferred, which will now result in Cambia hauling everything over here.
And here we are now, roughly 10 hours later. All of our valuables are now safely stored behind steel doors inside of a mountain. Now we can only hope that a trader passes by soon who's interested in buying them. For today's episode though, I think this is a good time to make the cut. I would say we have progressed nicely today. We saw Cambiar fend off his first raids, the food situation is looking not as critical as it used to be, and we also started digging into the mountain. In the next episode, we will probably go after some of that silver ore, and if things remain rather quiet, we will also continue work on the mountain base. Until then, as always, leave a thumbs up if you liked this episode. If you want to support the channel, then of course, feel free to subscribe. And as always, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time. Cheers!